The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Welcome back to the Electronics Inside, the show where we tear down toys, tools, and appliances just to find out what's inside. This is the Sony Mavica floppy disk camera. I don't have very long because the camera will only record a 15 second clip. Apologies for that 100 mile an hour introduction. This in fact is the Sony Mavica FD83 and as I tried to explain in the introduction, this is a camera that uses floppy disks. I'm imagining most people watching this are probably historic users of floppy disks, so they don't need any introduction. For anybody lucky enough to have never used one, this is a 1.44 high density double sided floppy disk. The read write rate for these is not great. Reliability, not so great. We'll talk more about that later. But the camera itself it comes from 1999. Mavica is an abbreviation of yeah, magnetic video camera. Now it sounds weird when you look at a floppy disk in a camera and kind of go, well, I kind of guess that makes sense. But actually the original Mavica came from about 1980 and used videotape to record a frame in NTSC video. So magnetic video camera actually kind of made sense. And it stored that in pure NTSC, exactly the same as a video recording, but A still per frame. Kind of made sense. And they just reused that title, that name, when they started making this series of cameras. The original MVC FD1 came out, I think at about 1995, again, using floppy disks as the medium, and they went through, and it's kind of good, actually, to a certain degree. Before I talk too much about the camera, let's start taking it apart because experience tells me this is gonna take some time and we might as well get started. Oh, before we do, I would like to thank Joshua Pritz for his recommendation on the DSLR teardown, commented, why not Sony Mavica? Here you go, thank you for your feedback, Joshua. If you've got suggestions, let me know in the comments or head over to the Element 14 community and let me know there. I kind of, I kind of, like and agree with or accept the idea of camera using floppy disks because there weren't a lot of options back at the time this came out. I mean, we got our first camera, I think 2001, and it came with XC cards. Again, at the time there were lots of sort of obscure formats floating around and they weren't that much bigger than floppy disks. I think we had a, a two meg and a four meg card and anything bigger than that was very expensive and nothing came with sort of standard flash drive readers. You used to get those sort of 15-in-one multi-card readers that eventually, oh no, corner on there's already broken. It wasn't me, I swear. Oh, let's take the battery out as well over here. Then that is actually a lithium ion battery. So well done, so you'd be getting in there only with the iron. But yeah, using a floppy disk, everything had a floppy drive. So you could take photos on the go, stick them into other people's computers, your own computer. I mean, my other camera had the options of uh, XC cards or serial, and serial was slow. And that wasn't always an option either. It's not all laptops, most did, because serial ports for mice and things like that were more commonplace. But what I dislike about the floppy drives First of all, let's talk about read-write speed. Now, once you filled up a 1.44 meg floppy drive, and I understand this was actually faster at writing data than normal floppy drives, which is only interesting because that means you can write data to this as quick as you like. Well, I think it's four times faster than the computer could read it. So I can take a video, fill up the drive, and then it takes ages for the, uh, for the video to copy to your computer. And just for argument's sake, so you know what I mean, uh, let's put a copy dialogue up in the corner of the video here, and uh, we'll come back to it when it's done. You'll have to excuse my suspicion. That felt remarkably easier than any of the other Sony cameras. 
So yeah, straight away, floppy drive mechanism appears to be all in the back of the shell. Obviously, you're going to have the screens and the, the screen and the buttons in here. All the camera in the front with the power and the battery compartment over here. Capacitor for flash, always don't touch it. But that felt kind of easy by comparison. Is our copying still going? Probably. The other thing I will say for floppy disks, reliability. I bought three floppy disks to try this camera out with, and one out of three was dead on arrival. Couldn't format it, couldn't rewrite it, nothing. Just absolutely dead. Let's put front to one side and attack the floppy drive, I guess, because this is what we're really here for. This is the main event. Ooh, anti-vibration grommets. Nice, but I wouldn't have thought the floppy disk mechanism was all that sensitive to vibration. There you go. That's your floppy mechanism, which is kind of a shame, really, because if this was a four-speed floppy drive, why didn't they just package that up in a three and a half quarter inch bay and make a PC compatible version? I know I would have appreciated a faster floppy drive when I was still having to use them. This LCD screen has one of the coolest little features I think I, I can remember seeing through an LCD. This LCD backlight on off, you're kind of like, well, why would you want to turn off the backlight for the LCD? Battery saving moment. You see this diffuser across the top here? If you're outside using this in daylight, all that light comes in here through a prismatic diffuser and scatters the light across the uh, same mirror the backlight uses. So you could, in good daylight, be able to see the LCD without the backlight on. Cool touch, especially because I suggest this would have used um, Compact fluorescent or miniature fluorescent as a backlight. So that would have been very energy hungry as opposed to modern LED backlit screens. Oh, right. Let's also talk about quality. Still quality out of this camera. Surprised me, like pleasantly surprised me. I think by default, it's a 0.8 megapixel camera. Oh, this, this module is purely the backlight. Yeah, still left that ribbon behind for the signal, video signal. So this is your backlight box. Where does that diffuser come in? Oh, so that top edge of etched glass across here is the uh, where you'd let the light in. Videos, on the other hand, I think they were boasted as 16 frames per second at 320 by 200 pixels. That's not great. Like, seriously not great. And then when you actually watch the video back, like the introduction to this video, if that's 16 frames per second, I would be staggered. It looks more like four frames per second to me. That said, it's using MPEG encoding, original MPEG encoding. It's probably recording at a standard bit rate, a, a static bit rate, not a variable bit rate. So depending on what's going on on the screen is how much data gets written to, um, written to the floppy disk, or in this case, saved to memory and then written to the 1.4 meg floppy disk after the fact. I suggest it's probably a static bit rate. So if you have nothing going on on the screen, it could probably remember 16 frames per second. But with lots going on on the screen, the frame rate has to drop to keep the bit rate constant. And that's, like I say, because this thing records purely to memory, then saves it all to the floppy disk afterwards. And you can work that out by the noises it makes. Nothing while you're recording, which of course is good because otherwise it interferes with the microphone and all you'd hear is the click, click, click of the floppy drive. The minute it reaches that 15 second capacity, which I'm not strictly sure it does, uh, it will make a 15 second video clip. It's not 15 seconds of video. It seems to cut off a lot before then. Anyway, and uh, then it writes the whole thing to the floppy disk. Excellent. Ribbon for the back connector, which carries all your display. A little joystick. Oh, nice. Nice little tactile four-way or five-way, including press. Nice little module, that. It's much better than having individual buttons. It's actually got some nice rocking tactile feel to it. That, I believe, is a little micro switch which ties up with the back of the floppy drive. There you go. and tells you if there's a disk in or not. Oh, no, that's a slider from the power button, sorry. So on the back of the case, you've got the power button, which you depress and push down. You've got the eject button, which must be that one, which that I think is mechanical to the floppy disk. Yeah, pressing that. Oh, <laughs> now I would expect that to be like a three position switch. Clearly it's not. That is all mechanically actuated with detent in the, oh, the molding. 
Wow, look at that. Mechanism built to last. And in the center, nothing's depressed. Play and movie mode. Middle, nothing's depressed and that's your still mode. Then you've got your normal tack switches and everything wonderfully labeled on the silk screen. When you get a little slider at the top, which is your zoom. This has three times optical zoom, six times digital zoom. I'm gonna be snobby about the zoom and say, don't use digital zooms. I still maintain that today. There's no point, you might as well take your photo as is, crop it when you get home later. You'll probably have more luck and you capture more detail in case you decide later you didn't like it zoomed in. So here we clearly have the camera module with the optics and the sensor in it. This is just your big power cable going to the battery, you need battery management, you need switch up here. I don't know where to start, so you might as well go for it. Obviously the big yellow port at the bottom of video. So you can plug this into a TV, which kind of makes sense because I think in the nine, late 90s, people were still a desktop PC in one area of the house, not really laptops. You wouldn't want to gather everybody around your PC to do, watch a slideshow. So to be able to plug this into your telly and show people your holiday pictures, if you're that kind of masochist, makes sense. So I don't know if that will come out as a... Oh, yeah, definitely comes out as a module. Again, that's something we'll come back to in its own right. Ooh, oh, oh, okay. So direct feed off the battery module to the charging module, which makes kind of sense, I guess. Yeah, you've got a high power, high current, probably a fairly noisy drawer at times coming off of the battery. So it kind of makes sense that you want to keep that segregated from your relatively sensitive optic or electronic signals from the optics. Yeah, little flash capacitor. Oh, so that wasn't for the flash at all. So that's for the trigger button and that tiny little door board onto here. And then from there, using this both ribbon cable onto this. So the shutter goes through two daughter boards as a pass through. I mean, I guess it simplifies wiring, but two extra connectors, probably two extra connectors you didn't need. But then that's Sony all over. So along with having to use a floppy disk, which I've clearly got mixed feelings about because the format itself is flawed, but its availability made it a good thing. It's weird to me that there is no data output from this. You can't plug it into a computer for digital transfer. Yeah. Oh. <sighs> That'd be the flash capacitor. Finally happened. All right, are you happy? You happy, internet? I'm not. So, I clearly have mixed feelings about this being a floppy drive because the format itself I feel is flawed. I didn't have particularly fond memories of using it, but equally it's prevalence, it's ubiquity, meant it was useful. Having a camera that used it meant you could take a handful of floppy disks, which you probably had at home, fill your camera up with them, shoot your heart to your heart's content, and most people could copy them off for you. And I've definitely heard stories of people using these for early online businesses because it meant you didn't have to go get them processed at a one hour or 24 hour photo booth, pick up your prints, get them scanned. You could take a photo and send it to a customer straight away. So imagine anybody selling a physical product which is unique or bespoke. These must have revolutionized everything for these people. Okay, so there's your flash capacitor and flash module taking power off the top corner of this motherboard, whichever way that went up, that way. And yeah, self-contained. So here is the sensor, tiny little image sensor. That's got to be six millimeters in diameter. I can't remember off the top of my head what the uh, sensor size is on this. I think it's a CMOS sensor. I don't imagine this is going to be working too well in low light. At least it had a flash, I suppose. I understand that even to this day, the best optics are hand ground lenses, which I totally understand because when you're looking for a surface that's perfectly shaped, you want to avoid any repetition, which of course machines introduce. That mechanical process of polishing, grinding, uh, is what introduces the regularities and does such defects. Totally get that, totally fine with that. But what I don't understand is how you hand grind a lens to a particular focal length or, or diopter or power. 
please, if you know, and even if this isn't the case, and actually it's just a little, like a throwback legacy or even an old wives' tale, let me know, I'd like to find out. If you want to let me know, you can shout on the comments of this video, or indeed head over to the Element 14 community. I'm user A531016, catchy I know, we'll put it down the bottom here. Ask me over there, let me know what you think. So that's just a plastic moulding that allows all of these parts to be assembled. Like I said, you see, you can see, if I get the thing in the right place, you see that that's designed to slide up and down in sympathy with this module, which also slid up and down, just to adjust the zoom and the focus in tandem with this front lens. And then in here, you've got two little worm gear motors, tiny, look at them. Got a couple of light gates, which are must be end switches so it can calibrate itself when it starts up, warms up. Uh, and then you have the shutter. It is a little five sided shutter mechanism that opens from the centre of that aperture outwards. So that's your shutter and your aperture, I guess. Cool module. Okay, last thing left our four speed floppy drive. <laughs> this better be as exciting as I hope it's going to be. So that's interesting that this is a floppy drive mechanism. You'll be getting data and feedback from the heads in here. You've got the motor control there, but there's actually no active electronics. So I'm guessing somewhere either on the back of here, it would make sense to put it on here. When these connectors are on the floppy disk and looking at the traces, they pretty much all lead back to here. So I'm guessing that's probably a floppy drive controller. Whoa. Very, very flat spindle motor. So you can see how this interlocks with the bottom of the floppy disk as it rotates and spins the disk. This little notch here, as you take that first rotation, spins around until it engages with that notch. And there's this ever so characteristic noise as you put a floppy disk in and it starts to spin and you hear that clink as it slots in place. couple of switches just to engage with the various notches on the back of the floppy disk. So these denote the disk type and write protection. So in here you can see the actual read write heads just in there and they pinch on the floppy drive on that magnetic disk top and bottom to read and write from it. So here you can see the worm drive, the, the worm, worm gear, worm gear. It's worm gear, isn't it? So as that motor runs forward and back, uh, it will move the head forward and back and show that that allows this read right heads to slide up and down. That's how it reads data from the disc. Well, there we have the Sony Mavica, the legend that is the floppy disk camera, all one version of other manufacturers did also manufacture these. Like I say, for its time, the use of a floppy disk made a lot of sense. I think it's a shame that the high speed floppy disk didn't make it into PCs. That to me would have long given the floppy disk some longevity. Uh, I'm also kind of disappointed to see there wasn't another data bus in there somehow, but yeah, it's a piece of history. It deserves its place. And uh, yeah, if anybody knows where I can get hold of one of those original 1980s Mavicas that recorded to videotape, hit me up over in the Element 14 community. I would love to get hold of one of those. Feels unlikely that any of them still exist. And even if they did, it wouldn't be much good to me over in my panel region. I would also like to thank again Joshua Pritt for recommending the Sony Mavica to me for a teardown. I think it was a great suggestion. If you've got any of your own, head over to the Element 14 community and look me up. Give me a shout with your ideas. You can get me, I'm A531016, the number will be below. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next time. If you're still here, thank you for watching all the way to the end of the video. I just wanted to note, in several of my videos, I've commented on capacitors and how they want to kill you. Now in this one, I actually took a belt off the capacitor for the flash. Oh. Not only that, when I was finished and I was packing the camera away, it also sparked off something in the box. Please be careful around capacitors. The more you know. <laughs>